Well, by now, I'm sure that you've seen at least a million times on your Instagram Reels feed, your Facebook Reels feed, if you're into that, your TikTok feed, your YouTube Shorts feed, your whatever else, what other feeds there are. There's probably even long form videos about it too, but I've been seeing a lot of it of the short form co content. It looks like Call of Duty is now fixed for multiple Call of Duties, even all the way back up to like World at War and I think even Call of Duty 3, but I don't even know if you're into that anymore. Or if you even know what that is. Yes, Call of Duty 3 did go up to Call of Duty 3 a very long time ago. That also took place in World War 2. But, but anyway, um, I, I really... <coughs> excuse me. I'm dying. I don't know why today. I'm dying every day. I'm pretty sure I'm dying almost every time I do one of these podcasts. But 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 anyway, oh look, my the uh, mic thing matches my matches my pants. I even that was not intentional, just FYI. So essentially, here it looks like Call of Duty's back for all the different platforms, and it, and from what I've heard, I don't know this for a fact, and I don't believe it 100. percent But it look, but it sounds like now Call of Duties are safer to play because Microsoft essentially. They're going to be going through with this acquisition of, of Activision, right? So, for the backstory here, it sounds like Microsoft took the old Call of Duty games, put them on new servers, and now you're able to play them and actually get lobbies, you know, without having to wait 55 million years to find one game. It almost is instantaneous like the old times when there was millions of players online on Call of Duty. Now, it's, it's pretty much back to that. So, Microsoft, without even actually acquiring Activision... Which they're in the process of it, so it's not really formal yet. But it seems like the deal is going to go through, even after all the blocks that that have been put on it and whatever else. It seems like they've overcome that, right? Um, PlayStation is not in innocent in this whole thing too, but we'll we'll kind of get into more the more corporate side of things probably towards the end. But uh, yeah, it looks like you can get on Call of Duty: Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare Two, the old ones, like the good ones. More that war, you can play some zombies on there too. I'm pretty all the zombie servers are fixed too, so all that stuff is good. Like, it sounds like that the also the issues, which is server related, by the way, the hackers being able to get your IP address and whatever else, that is actually related to the server thing. I mean, you can't get somebody's IP address without being on a server, just FYI, but. Um, it sounds like most of that's fixed. If not, it's all fixed, but the code is still vulnerable. So unless they fix the code in the new Call of Duties and then and possibly the old ones, I don't think they're going to fix the old ones. But um, if they fix the, the code in the Call of Duties, that may not happen anymore. Unless they're working on it too, I don't know. There's been no updates physically on that, so I don't know. But I'm just letting you know that that might still be an issue. Essentially, the coding in Call of Duty may still be vulnerable, so people still could get past the new servers that Microsoft sent up set up to actually get you to get you know information or whatever else and hack your computer and you know do some pretty nasty things that still might be there i don't 100 percent know nobody's mentioned it so i'm just saying that it's still a possibility now with that being said um you can play every call of duty before mono warfare 2 the second that we currently have out now without pretty much with finding a game almost instantaneously you've probably seen this again a million times on your feed so far i know i i have um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm happy for it. I still don't think that I should play call of duty because of what I said last time, not last time, but a few podcasts ago about, you know, essentially call of duty doing what they did to Nick Merckx and a lot of the controversy that they, that they've been hitting because at this point, Microsoft now did this change with the servers and it wasn't actually Activision. They're just trying to offload their company onto Microsoft so that they have to fucking deal with it. So We'll get more into like, actually, I may even make this a separate, a separate episode to talk about more about the Activision Blizzard, uh, Microsoft acquisition type of thing. Right. So, um, what I, what I want to make clear here is Microsoft is going to, is taking over Activision and they are going to make a lot of things better. I feel like, but the, the problem in the long term and the, wow, my hair is really far back on this one, huh? Looks like a slick back. Any, anyway, um, they they so Microsoft acquiring Act, uh, Activision is 
going to be good in a lot of different ways, but then also bad, and I and I feel like so, so, some other ways because Microsoft isn't 100 percent su- successful themselves. Like their Gears of War Five game is their latest game, and the Horde servers, there's no one playing it. Again, there could be just because there's nobody playing the game really, and there's also a lot of issues with the game. So they're they're having their own abandonment pro- projects, but it seems like Call of Duty as as a whole has been abandoned completely by Activision. So I guess they're doing better. Then, then Activision, Microsoft is doing better than Activision in that sense, right? So, <clears throat> I don't think that Activision is going to be, uh, again, and w- when I say Activision, I mean really like the C-class executives or even the owners of Activision. Like, they're going to be pretty much gone and out of the picture and Microsoft is going to take over. So, let's hope that they actually make some real change like what they've done already. So that's one, that's one block, right? That's one block of like a big block too. This is like a big building block of what's of, of what they did. Essentially what Microsoft did with this building block was they created a, a great image for call of duty in the past and present call of duties so that the servers are fixed and that there's no more issues, which this also brings in my Microsoft's cloud technology probably into, into this. So they, they probably, uh, they probably fixed a lot of that, and it's going to be available on their uh, on Game Pass too on on, on 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 Xbox. So they just fixed Xbox. By by the way, I, f- I forgot to mention this. They, if you don't know this already, they just fixed Xbox. They didn't fix PlayStation. They didn't fix PC yet. If they ever will, I'm pretty sure they're going to fix P- PC. But uh, PlayStation is being a little bit more rough with it. So PlayStation may not be fixed a- ever. We'll we'll see what happens. Uh, but that's that sucks for you know for everyone that's you know. A PlayStation player, but yeah, see, so PlayStation isn't better in in in, in every way. Just FYI. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to I had to slip that in there. So, uh, the mic the building block that Microsoft is using that's that's a good first step to pr- pretty much negating all the bad shit that Activision has done in the past you know five ten years so 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 far. It hasn't negated it completely, but it's like what it's the stepping stone. It's one stepping stone up many if you want to call it stairs or if you want to call it a building they're building using building box to build us a nice tower of good things let's hope that they're actually doing that so this is a big one this is number one especially especially for xbox players a huge w for xbox and that's the one thing that really has to get said like microsoft is going to focus on xbox just fyi because it's microsoft that's their main product they're not going to focus on pc or playstation definitely not because you know playstation is kind of being annoying right now as a company towards the acquisition of, of of activision so playstation players are probably in for a real like hellstorm probably in the next 10 or so years so just be aware of that <clears throat> if, if you're a playstation player and you're watching this but microsoft is gonna is gonna 100 focus on xbox and that's the thing that really has to get said here like they're not going to focus on on other things they're going to focus on their cash cow which right now is microsoft xboxes like xbox one xbox series x you know x xbox s or whatever like that's going to be their main focus and whatever console they're coming out with you know in the next couple couple of months or couple of years i can't say couple of months i I, th- I think they come out with a console like every seven years it's been like four or five now since they came out with a console so you know we still got some time until they come out with another console but it's going to be, they're going to be, it's going to be an interesting, um, it's going to be an interesting next 10 years to see how everything play, plays out. Not only with the acquisition itself, but just how Call of Duty and, and everything Activision kind of gets played out. Like, let's see what kind of new games Activision, or um, not even Activision, Microsoft is going to create with Activision's technology. That's, that's, that's what I'm interested in seeing. Maybe even Im- implementing AI in some way. I don't know if they're going to do that. I'm just assuming that they might, but if they don't great or not great, but you know, whatever, it doesn't really matter at this point. Like AI is coming. And if you're not ready for it, that's just your fault. Um, you know, we just got to figure out a way to either make a counter AI. That's going to counter the AI that's going to kill us or what, whatever, you know, kind of, kind of like the Avengers age of Ultron where we had Jarvis, you know what I mean? Like, but even then he kind of killed Jarvis in the, in the beginning. We're fucked. A- anyway, the, uh, <coughs> Yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not hundred percent screwed. Don't, don't let, don't let anyone scare you into thinking that like AI is going to kill us. Um, definitely, it definitely is coming. I just don't know in what form it's going to come. It could be a killer robot. I doubt it. Um, but a- AI most likely if they're better than us, they're, they're not going to kill us. So that's, that's, that's what I'll say on that. Activision and Microsoft are going to be a great team. I feel like, and I want to, I want to stay positive because I, I, I want, I'm a micro, I'm an Xbox player. 
uh, my, Microsoft won't contact me or I can't get any a hold of anyone at, at, at Microsoft to get myself a new Xbox because I don't know if you knew, you know, I got the old, you know, Xbox one here, like really old Xbox one. So uh, I would like to have a new one, you know, just to kind of like, I don't want to buy it though, because you know, they're going to come out with another one in like three or four years. So why the hell would I buy another one? And any, anyway, <laughs> why would I buy another one when they could just give me, you know, when they could just give me a new Xbox and just, you know, I can show you guys how it works and like what it can really do and whatever else, you know what I mean? So something to think about in, in general, but I, uh, I, I, I wanted to, uh, I also wanted to take this time to say that I appreciate all, all, all the support so far. Um, I saw a couple of videos pop popped off over the weekend, uh, and even last Friday. So I appreciate the support. Um, if you could, if you are watching this, this podcast right, right now, please feel free to like it. If you've watched it this, this far, but, uh, we're not done yet. I'm just, I'm just giving you like a little, uh, half little thing here. But, um, so the Activision Blizzard acquisition, uh, from Microsoft is, I feel like is, 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 um, is a stepping stone in and this, this could go one of two directions, right? So I'm thinking one direction is bad and one direction is good. The bad direction. Let's start. Let, let's start with that first. The the bad direction could be could be a, a, anything, right? Like the bad direction could be they just take over and all of the games that they make from here on out are trash. Like we've already kind of been getting trashy games, right? We've already been kind of getting trashy games. But now they might produce actual trash. Like there has been arguments. I've seen this. I've seen a video on this a, while, a couple a couple days ago. Somebody saying like people were saying that Activision or sorry, my, Microsoft has not produced a good game in a while with, with companies that, that they've purchased in the past. Um, but I guess there's like final fantasy and whatever else that they, that they were a part of. So that's not a hundred percent true. I don't like fi final fantasy games. They're not my, they're not my cup of tea. Uh, it's not that I don't like them. I never really played them. I also, it's not really my cup of tea. I played them a couple times. Not really, not really for me. I, I played kingdom hearts too for a while. I've really, after a while, I was just like, this is just not my, not my cup of tea. Again, I'm simple going, go, run and gun and kill things and shoot things up. I don't really, I'm a, I'm a mindless player. I, I, I get home from work. I've been working all day. My mind has been going, been working. I just want to just mindlessly destroy things. <clears throat> That's why I like Hulk, Hulk ultimate destruction and pro and prototype. Those, those games were the shit. And any, any, anyway, I think that, uh, the good way now is, um, they're, they're going to do exactly what, what they just did. They're going to improve each, t each year, each month, wh whatever the case may be on the existing Call of Duty games. And they're, they're going to figure out a way to make it, to make it pretty much because this is step one. I, I can tell you what they did with the Xbox service is step one, because they're going to, they're planning on putting all the Call of Duties on game pass. So if they're planning to do that, that means they're going to bring every Call of Duty that they can back from the dead they're going to be, you're going to be able to play it no matter what. And you're going to be able to go from, you know, playing it, playing Call of Duty 3 to being playing, you know, let's say, you know, Modern Warfare 2 or whatever, uh, this new one in like a matter of seconds. Like they want it to be super quick. They want you to be able to get into games and whatever else, just so that they could start building probably on the foundation of what they already have. So they may even be releasing less Call of Duties and they may just be focusing on putting out content for the newest Call of Duty, like let's say Modern Warfare 2. Like DMZ, what I didn't realize when I when I made that uh, that podcast e episode last week was that D DMZ is in like beta still. It's there's it's like a it's like a beta program essentially. They're still it's still in beta. Like that's what they said. Like it's it says DMZ beta on like the logo. So that's something to keep in mind too. Is that D DMZ is in beta mode. It's like that could be changing into something really awesome. We we don't know that. Um, but I did want to get back actually really quick to what I said before, which I didn't. I never really elaborated on. Which is I really don't want to play the new Call of Duties or whatever or the old Call of Duties because I said I would delete it because of the Nick Marks drama and whatever else that Activision has been doing. Um, I did end up playing DMZ, which I'll probably do another podcast e episode on like kind of just explaining a lot more about the DMZ program, like as itself, like the game mode as, you know, as, as a whole, what I feel about it. Um, I will say this as, as a little teaser. I think DMZ is going to save Call of Duty, but there is, there is a caveat to that. And that, that caveat we'll have to get into. Um, I do think that PVP is sprinkled into it, but I, I also... I also found out that there's smaller maps. So there's tinier maps that are in the game 
where compared to like I forgot what the name of it was, but there's there's two different maps. There's like a Rebirth Island. There's like a Verdansk, where larger map, smaller map, and like the smaller map you encounter a lot more people. Like on the smaller map, I encountered like three teams of people, like three actual teams of players, versus like the other map where I've only encountered one. Two. No, one. Yeah, one. One team. And I killed all I killed their whole team. I wiped the whole team. But the smaller map, more rebirth demons on there. So they're like they're demon assholes. They're just getting shotguns and they're like, you know, some machine guns and they're just, they're destroying you. Um But we'll get more into that once once we start to do that. But I but I do think that DMZ will save Call of Duty. And especially this the, the new one. Because if they are able to do what I think they're able to do with it. There is going to be, especially since it's still in beta, there's still a lot to be done. If there is a lot to be done, there it's going to save Call of, Call of Duty. Like, put those abilities in there. Put put that put that uh, that temp V in there too. Oh my God, that'd be the crazy experience, especially against bots and other players. Like just against bots normally, so you can get away easier and whatever else. Destroy a whole clan of them. Destroy helicopters with the laser vision. You know, disable helicopters with your pulse or whatever. You know, that kind of stuff would definitely be fun. But anyway. Um, we'll get, we'll get more into that. So the thing that I wanted to, uh, the thing that is my nose bleeding. No, it's not. We're good. Yeah. I thought my nose was bleeding for a second. Um, am I still filming? I am still filming. Okay. We're good. I literally, sometimes I actually, th I'm, I get so nervous cause I've literally filmed one of these before and I have actually not filmed the entire time. And I've been talking and I was talking for like 15 or 20 minutes. So just FYI, that's why sometimes if you see me like look over or whatever, I'm like trying to see if I'm still, if I'm still actually in, in, if I'm still actually filming. Cause sometimes it does actually go off some, sometimes it's random. I don't know what happens. I need a new computer probably, but <clears throat> yeah, I, I was, I, I've been filming videos. I've been filming like, I've been filming like live, like not live streams, but like, uh, videos like long form vi vi videos. And I'll be like playing on, on my Xbox to like film and everything. And I'll look over and I like, won't be, I won't be filming. Cause my desk isn't like really set, set up to have a monitor. Cause essentially right now, like this camera is my computer screen, right? So like I have a second monitor behind it and then I can't see half of like the bottom right half of the screen. So like I have to look over and see the record thing. That's, you know, that's, that's what I'm working with right, right now. You know, just poor. It's fine. And, 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 and anyway, uh, I work, I, I work, I, I work with what I have. I'm trying to like improve my entire set you know like again i cleaned up i cleaned up my room here you know i cleaned it up i made it look nice for everyone hopefully that you know it's better than, than it looks and um we are uh we are i'm gonna i really want to have like my own studio but we'll have to see if that if that ever happens in the near future not ever but definitely in the near future to see if that 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 happens but back on topic I think Microsoft is going to make um, is going to make Activision better as a company. Not only that, but I also think it's going to be um, the games that come out. I don't want to say that they're going to feel more corporate. What what I feel like they're they're gonna what I feel like the games are, are going to come out from Activision. They're going to be more. They're going to be more. The games that come out from Activision are, are going to be more focused on probably a cut and dry type of experience with a, just a sprinkle of, of creativity. Let's, let's, let's put it that way. I, I'm, I'm confident in that answer simply because I think Microsoft's Gears of War saga has been interesting because if, if you've ever played Gears of War, which you much most of you probably haven't that are watching this this video, but if you have, awesome. Gears of War started out as more of a horror story. O almost. Where like these random things, these random alien things came from the ground and like attacked us and blindsided us and whatever else. And the juvies were like crazy scary. The music was always crazy scary. It was always like, it felt like a horror game. And then when you play it now... It's like, now we've got the technology to kill these things. We know exactly what they are. So what I feel like they did very well with Gears of War, which which might be very good with Call of Duty, they've developed not only characters in Gears of War very well over a franchise, like over a series of games, and they've also introduced new characters that also had their own character arcs and whatever else, but they've done a very good job of bringing the game itself from an infancy stage of, let's say, you know, They've they've done a really good job of bringing the game from an infancy stage all the way to its like 
to its conglomerate or to its championship game now. And a lot of you may not like Gears of War or whatever, but at the end of the day, the, the game itself and the stories and the characters, it went from being a horror game to like a badass story game, which is pretty much what I felt when I played the first Gears of War versus now. And I could be wrong. I Maybe I was younger when I played the Gears of War, so like maybe it felt more like a horror story that, than it did an actual, like, you know, let's kill these bastards type type of game. Uh, but that's what I feel like when I played Gears of War 1 versus Gears of War 5. So that's, you know, that is pretty much to me like the, the this whole thing. So I, so I think that Microsoft, if they're in charge of actual storyline and character de- development, I think what they're going to do is they're going to send, they're going to put their best people on it. They're going to help out Activision with doing that because I feel like Activision also in, in the Call of Duty franchise, this could be because of money, but I feel like that Call of Duty itself has kind of forgotten the, the start and the end. So when it comes to character development, I feel like Call of Duty has just been really lazy and I feel like story development, they've just been really lazy. So it's just been like basic story here, play the multiplayer. Then all of a sudden it turned into uh, it, I mean, pr- pretty much it was like campaigns were almost, you know, unmenorable, like after like Modern Warfare 3. And then it was like, just play the multiplayer. <clears throat> then we got to the phase where let's not even play the multiplayer. Let's go straight to Warzone. Fuck multiplayer. Like that's what, that's what Call of Duty I feel like has been developing. So it's like more focused on just getting the money from Warzone or from the Battle Royale versus actually developing a good story and even like a good game that actually, that actually, you know, brings you joy, but also has some kind of development in it where it's just like, yeah, I mean, now they're like, let's give you this complicated fucking gunsmith. It's like, look, I'm going to say this for everyone. I don't, I don't even think Gen Z kids said, said this shit, like younger kids than, than me. Nobody was like, yeah, you know what? You know what we fucking need in the next Call of Duty? You, you want to know what would definitely make this make this game 100% relatable? Is if we made it a real gunsmith and just had it so we could just like just maneuver everything and have everything be customizable. Having all these attachments on. Like I could put like a per... It's just... It just stop. Stop. Okay? Five attachments in Modern Warfare 2019 was a lot. Okay? Like... There were some cases where I'm like, I wish I could have this on it. Or I wish I could have this and this on it with a perk. Or I wish I could have five attachments plus a perk or whatever. But like, you don't need to, you don't need, it's still five attachments though, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's pretty sure it's still five. But like, you don't need to like complicate the shit out of things. Like what, what I feel like Activision has been doing as a company, and this may not be the developers and maybe the C-class executives, like, like I always say, they like we ask for something simple and they just they just give us like a rocket ship. Like we're like all we want is like a balled up piece of tin foil. And they're like they're like here here is space station NASA's next like fucking moon landing launcher. You're like what? You're like why we did not ask for this. We asked for a balled up piece of tin foil. You guys gave us a rocket ship worth a billion dollars. Why? Like, I know that there, there's a phrase out there that says, give people what they, what they, give people something that they may not know they, they need, but I can assure you, we don't need a gunsmith that needs to be like interchangeable with all these different sites. And then I'm pretty sure that they, they didn't even give us the full like fucking tutorial. They didn't even give us the whole thing. They said that they would give us the ability to like put on different barrels onto different attachments and different, and different guns. So like, if you unlock something for like one other gun class or something, you get it for the next one or something. I don't remember exactly what it was. I never, I don't, I don't really play Mono for two that much. And I didn't really want, I didn't, it was too complicated for me. And my, and my, and my, and my brain hurt just watching the goddamn tutorial online. Just saying. So, <coughs> but I'm pretty sure that they didn't even give us like one of the features that they promised us, which was like really one of the big ones, which is, which is in, in, in interchangeability. Like, I, I don't think I get like a muzzle flash from like one assault rifle to another. I think I have to unlock it for that assault rifle too. But then it, it also defeats the purpose of 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 upgrading guns. Cuz it's like if you just if you just unlock <laughs> cuz you still have to rank the gun up. Like I was just I was playing D- DMZ and I, and I and I still had to unlock I still had to rank up the gun to get the thing for the other gun. Like so if I'm if I'm using an, a, like an LMG and I'm using a muzzle flash for it, let's say, just easy, and I still have to, I still have to rank up the second LMG in the class, in in the, in the weapon class to get that muzzle. 
But I have it. It's unlocked. But I still have to rank the gun up to get that slot so I can oh, so I can put it on. But then my point is, is like, what's the why would if I rank up one gun to let's say fifty, let's say let's say fifty is the highest lo level, right? What's the point of doing that if I have all all the attachments on this gun? And then the second gun, I have to rank up to let's say twenty five to get it. From twenty five to fifty, what am I doing? Just getting experience points or something? Maybe if if they even give you experience points for leveling up your guns. Like extra experience, right? Like so, if you get from like level twenty five to twenty six, you get like a thousand extra points towards your character or something, or even towards like you know probably towards your character, like maybe that. But it's like, what's the, what's the point of me getting from twenty five to to fifty? Makes no sense. So that so that's why so that's the thing I I like kind of thought about, and there's a lot of different things, a lot of different flaws I I can poke in what they have going, but like that's that's why that's why essential point. Like we we wanted something very simple. And then they gave us this giant conglomerate thing that we didn't ask for. And it's like, why would you do this? That's what they've been doing. They've been, we, we asked them for something simple. Just fix the DMR. Just fix fix the parachute glitches. Fix like fix this shit. Like fix the fucking infinite, you know, uh, breathing glitch. And they're like, all right, here's the skin. You're like, no. No, we don't want a skin. Stop giving us a skin. We want the game to work. <laughs> so that that's that's my essential point here. That's the thing that, that um, one, gets me upset. But also... You know, it's just there's just giant mistakes that are being made within Activision that I think I think Microsoft will come in and try to fix, and I think that it's gonna it's gonna take even firing pe pe people possibly to get that mindset out because when the players ask for something specific, just just fix it, just just do exactly what we ask. That's all we want. If ninety percent of the community is saying. You know, get if ninety percent. If ninety percent, I, I can't even say this with a straight face because it's so stupid. If ninety, if ninety percent of the community is saying fix the glitch, and you, and then ten percent of it is saying fix or, or get, give us a new skin, they'll give us a new skin. They won't fix the fucking glitch. You know what I mean? Like that's the that's the problem. That's the issue that that I see now. Again, these are very simple examples, and probably a lot of them are outdated now. But my the the point still stands. We ask for something simple, and, and they give us they give us this this giant like mess of a monster that causes more issues nor normally than than it does actually solve the problem. So I don't want you to think that like I'm trying to 100 shit shit on Call of Duty here. But that's what I've seen playing for so long. That's just like it's just that and. Going back to what I was saying before, I think Microsoft will come in and they will focus more on hopefully story, like to bring the story together, or if they're maybe working on zombies again, they'll bring the story back for zombies and whatever else, and they'll the old Call of Duties will be kind of brought back to life. Maybe just for playing, maybe the new Call of Duties from now on will have better stories built out in them, like a storyline that's more than two hours, you know, or more than three hours or whatever. Um... Because, you know, as the campaigns got shorter and even easier and more like kind of just linear pass, the more it was like you they just wanted you to go to multiplayer and spend money or go to Warzone and spend money. And I think that that's really what they're, you know, what they're, you know, I mean, because I could, you, you could argue that Gears of War is the same thing, but you can play Gears of War and buy stuff, not with real money, with like iron that you can earn, with coins that you can earn. You can earn coins in Call of Duty 2, but you can't earn as as many coins as you can in uh in Gears of War. Like I'm I'm a I'm like one of the highest levels in the game, but like now it's like all my cards are like level six for for hordes. So it's like I'm getting all these gold coins like every game. So it's like I can buy whatever skin I want, whatever I want, because not I mean obviously there's stuff that you have to buy with with real money, but like I don't buy those skins because they're not as cool as the ones that that they release for the people that are actually playing the game. So that's another thing too, is like, again, Call of Duty is more focused on microtransactions versus like games like Gears of War. There's tons of out there that are, that are focused on like playing the game and earning the actual stuff. Granted, they don't make money off of that stuff, but like you actually have to play the game and grind it to be able to get the, to be able to get to that place. Like you're not just like, you're not, you're not just playing one game and getting 50,000 coins where you can just buy like two skins. Like you have to play for a very long time and you have to get that down pat and be able to like get you know your characters up and whatever else and and you know yeah it's not just like it's not just like a simple thing so there's there's nuances to to, to, to everything and I, and I think the longevity of the game is preserved 
when it's not just focused on microtransactions. I could be wrong. Maybe statistics say, say otherwise. But but as far as the community goes, I know everyone is tired of what's going on in Call of Duty. Like, just the simple fact of Warzone, of Warzone 2 now being Temp V, being, you know, superpowers in there. It's like, they wanted to loop backpacks, get rid of the slide cancel, get rid of the movement. Now, all of a sudden, we're jumping 20 feet in the air like, like Zombie Royale. Like we're, we're we're we are scaling five to ten story buildings in Call of Duty now with with Temp V, right? Like I I get it, but it was they should have just done this and just gotten gotten into this in the first place. Or what they should have done is they should have just upgraded the Warzone engine, not even the engine, sorry, the gameplay itself, and just put Warzone Two into Warzone One's engine, so then they could just keep adding and adding and adding, and then people don't lose their stuff. So, at the end of the day, I don't think that the people at, at Activision, again, maybe maybe executives, were thinking about the real cause and effect of all this stuff that they're, that they're doing to to the player base. So, I don't want to sound like a dick, but I'm going to sound like a dick, like. Why didn't they just do this at, in the first... Why didn't Activision just do what they're doing now to Warzone 2 in, in the first place? Or, again, just upgraded Warzone 1 to be into Warzone 2. Why, why did they have to do this whole thing? I think it's just... I, I think Activision is... This could be this could be way off, but it might, it might be true. I think Activision is trying to... At least Call of Duty is... Trying to innovate, reinvent the wheel. Which is not what they have to do. Especially now that they're trying to just coast... Like, why would they bring Warzone 1 into Warzone 2? Granted, there were so many people bitching about how the Warzone 1 movement was all this and yada, yada, yada. But, like, why not just add Advanced Warfare to it eventually and then make it into Jetpacks too? Like, have have a Jetpack ro ro Royale where people can do, you know, they can run faster, they can have more, you know, jets left and right, forward and back, have it where they can jump higher, like, things. Like, why don't they just do that? Why do they have to make another Warzone pretty much negate everything that everybody spent money on in Warzone 1. I mean, I'm not, I'm not butthurt about Warzone 1, just FYI. Again, I already, if you've, if this is your first time tu 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 tuning into this, I never bought anything from Warzone 1. I have no money in, in that, like physical money in, in, in that game, besides actually buying it. So, well, not the Warzone, but Modern Warfare 20, 2019. So, um, that's my point. Like, why didn't they just... Why, why do they have to do Warzone 2 just to learn? Do they have to like learn from their mistakes? Is that, that's what I'm getting at. That, that's what I'm getting from, from, from that essentially. Um, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover today. So if you did watch this video this far, I do appreciate you. Thank you very much for watching. Please like the video. If you watched it this, this, this far. And if you have watched it this far, you should probably subscribe as well. That's all.